Hey everybody, it's Jason Law here, and once again it is time for a deadlift day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below, be greatly appreciated. Alright, uh, so I think I'm going to keep with the theme that I said I'm going to do here, put a lot of thought into this for a little while, and yeah, I think I'm going to run the uh, four ME rotation again. Um, I actually had had luck with that a couple years back when I did it seven days a week, but that's just insane. Four days a week should be more than enough. So I started off with a deficit deadlift with a stiff bar. I uh, got to 555, felt pretty dang heavy, definitely above 95%. So I called it there. And I based that, you know, people say, well, you made a big jump, a 60 pound jump. Yes, I did. And I based that on how it felt, right? I can tell from the bar speed how heavy it feels in my hands, right about what's going to be a real solid training max. It's going to be in that you know 95 to 99 percent range it's just something i've gotten good at um, so i went ahead and did that took it up to a nice heavy solid lift wasn't a hundred percent max but it was you know within a few percentages all right afterwards um, i decided because again i feel like i need a little bit more heavy work with close variations on my my classic lifts okay i just feel like i need it um, it's something that I would benefit from. It's stuff I've used a lot in the past because I've done so much tons and tons and tons of tens after doing max and speed work. That's actually all I've done for a while. And when I look at the different points in my training of what's always given me the best strength, this sort of stuff works. You know, and that was the problem with, uh, say, the 531. Everyone's like, oh, your squat and deadlift climbed on it, but then they didn't when it came time to max, right? And that's the problem with the, that system, you know? <laughs> it's the problem with it. It doesn't make you good at maxing. And I need to be good at maxing. And we come over to the data that we have on, you know, maxes at the start of a workout have a lot of benefits. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to do a lot of fives. I'm going to do some tens and stuff still too, right? There's still lifts I'm doing tens on. They tend to be the slightly smaller stuff. I think my bigger multi-joint movements, I want to keep about five or six. So I went ahead and did uh, three sets of deficit deadlifts with the stiff bar. Did 405. Nice, challenging work sets after, after a heavy training max. You know they weren't all out. Yes, I left a couple reps in reserve on them, and that's okay. We had good bar speeds, good power, nice, solid tension, uh, good range of motion, and that's the idea. Again, stimulating some, some extra muscle growth, some myofibular growth by doing some heavier work there. And it helps with the movement patterns a little bit. So really, these are going to be kind of kind of assistance type stuff. So my, my training really is going to be max work on variations, uh, assistance work, and then accessory work. And we need to differentiate between those. Oftentimes, I haven't when I run normal conjugate. I just go straight into accessories, right? Now I feel like I could use some assistance work, but they need to be stuff that I pick very carefully, stuff that's going to have good carryover, not just what people will call sticking point carryover. It's not always going to be a lot of partials and stuff. It might be, but I need to be looking at what's the hypertrophy gain on them too. Okay, a deficit deadlift real good for hypertrophy. All right, afterwards I did supersets back and forth on the belt squat and the glute ham raise. Uh, stuck with the same weights I used last time because these are challenging. At the 3x5 with 230 on the belt squat, using a wide stance, going as deep, getting it well below parallel. Again, trying to get uh, that deeper stretch, that lengthening position on the quads. Again, I want to build quads and adductors with this. That's really my big goal from the belt squat. Uh, glute and ham raise. I've been using bands and stuff for a little bit, but I decided again, let's, let's add weight again so that we get a little more tension at the bottom when the, the hamstrings in the lengthened position. Uh, again, I want to maximize hamstring growth, and we went with eights, which were a little higher rep on those, uh, mainly because, I don't know, when I've done lower reps in that on the glute ham raise, I do feel like, uh, I don't know if I get quite as much out of it on a smaller movement like this, but I think stuff about eight to 10 works really well. I mean, I've used some for sets of 20 in the past, but uh, I feel like this is a good trade-off between, between tension and volume. But again, we're keeping the volume reasonable keeping the volume reasonable with three sets of eight. And that's the way I'm going to be doing all this stuff. It's going to be kept at uh, very, very modest volumes on individual exercises. And the reason for that, this is how we do a little higher volume of training while 
uh, keeping overuse down because really overuse is our big concern. And I had people point that out yesterday. They're like, you did three different types of presses for three sets. That's a lot. I'm like, yeah, it is, but I'm able to handle it, right? And since they were vastly different presses, they were, they were very, very different. We went from flat bench to incline to overhead press, right? Even changing the grip width. Uh, they're, they're hitting very, very different angles, right? But keeping in mind, my benching needs the most work. My bench is my weakest lift right now got to get the bench up and I need to build muscle in the right places to do that and I need everything heavy enough to give a carryover but that's neither here nor there let's get back over to the lower body day so after those two movements I decided to do supersets with the reverse hypers um, and I'm using west side type programming on these just doing 50% of about 50% of my squat what I think my current squat is you know based upon my last meet uh, and doing five by 10 at 50% of it and focusing on trying to get a good range of motion and, and contracting a bit at the top. Now you can't do that because there's always gonna be some swing unless you're only putting like 20 pounds on it. Uh, but trying to get that, that little bit longer range of motion that I can, so trying to get it a little higher at the top. So again, focusing on, on quality of reps here rather than just moving the heaviest weight possible on this. So this is being treated as a true accessory. Right, this is being treated as a true accessory, whereas in like the belt squat, I'm treating like an assistance, the deficit deadlifts are assistance. And then of course, I'm doing my, my weighted pull-ups here. And I think I've kind of settled on that. I love pull-ups, I really do, um, even though my structure doesn't allow for the best range of motion, even when I do my full range of motion. And I don't care what people think about it. I like pull-ups, I feel like I get a lot out of them. And again, just to avoid the overuse, we're gonna limit the total sets to you know three per workout. Do them weighted so that I put less wear and tear on the joint because we're doing less total reps. Uh, and I really feel them a lot in my shoulders. You know, those wider grip ones, if people were to ask me, you know, I feel like they're actually a shoulder exercise, rear delt, posterior delt, rhomboids. I feel all that stuff, which is interesting because we think of pull-ups as being more middle back than upper, at least historically. But I don't know. I really feel those areas tremendously when I do them. Okay. And that's where I feel it. I don't really feel much lat on pull-ups, interestingly enough. But I don't feel lats on rows either most of the time. You know, unless it's the seal row. Yet I still have really big lats. So again, just working on getting really strong on pull-ups. And then we finished off with ab work. I ended up doing about 100 reps and then just kind of quit on these standing band crunches. Again, I, this is the type of core work I like to do either high rep burnout type stuff like this standing or I like to do hanging leg raises and today I opted for the standing band crunches uh, again you end up doing really really high reps with these because if we use a band tension that's much heavier than this I almost can't do any reps so there's there's feels like there's very little trade-off there uh, you kind of have to go to one extreme or the other at least for me when I do these with cables it's, it seems more gradual because it's just the nature of bands but I ended up doing about a hundred nice nice good burn in my core area just to finish everything off um, after a, a solid productive workout all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i'll talk to you guys next time